now I'm at my machine getting ready to start sewing. Um, so I wanted to show you what my how I do my settings. I've learned this neat trick over the years of what really works for me for um, machine applique. I'm going to be using, first of all, a straight stitch. So I've got my straight stitch um, set here, and then I want to set my stitch length to 1.9. You can see the numbers going down there in the stitch length. The other thing I always do when I'm doing this, I do it in most of my quilting and sewing, is I put the needle in the down position. So that means that every time I stop my machine, my needle is going to stop in the fabric. So that becomes really important when you're pivoting and things like that, that things don't shift while you're sewing. Now the stitch I'm mainly going to use for this is going to be my buttonhole stitch. So I'm putting that one in my computer machine here. There's my buttonhole stitch. This is a single buttonhole stitch. A lot of times on larger pieces, I will use a double buttonhole stitch. It's thicker and bolder. But with these tiny little legs and little details, I decided I want to use just a single buttonhole stitch for this. Now I'm going to start by setting my stitch like down to that same 1.9. And you will see as I sew why that becomes important. And in my width with these little pieces again, I want it to be a 1.6. That's going to work well for me. Okay, so now I'm ready to start sewing. Now I have my fabric all prepared and ready to sew. One of the things I did after putting all of my applique pieces on is I put on uh, on the back of the piece, I have some stabilizer. Now this is a stabilizer that actually fuses onto the back, but it's a, one that becomes very soft as it's washed. And there are other stabilizers out there that I also like, which will actually dissolve when you wash them. And that works well too. Since this one's gonna be a wall hanging when I'm done with it, I didn't care if it was a little bit stiffer than uh, you know, than I would like if it were a baby blanket or something like that, where I'd want it nice and soft. So um, I'm using this one that just gets soft as it gets washed. It won't make the piece too stiff, but adds a little bit to it. Alrighty, so I'm ready to begin sewing, and I actually start in an odd place. I'm going to start by doing, I'm going to start by doing this leg that's in the background. I always do my background pieces first, so this is the bottom layer. It has another leg on top of it. So this piece, um, these legs that are underneath on the flamingo, they will get done first. But instead of just starting right off going that direction, I actually am going to turn, turn it upside down for a moment. And this is just a little trick I've learned that works well. Um, if you have a machine in particular that will remember your stitches, remember I put in those two stitches I'm going to use? Well, my my Bernie, I call my machine Bernie, it's an old Bernina, um, just an old Quilters Edition 440. Um, what, I, what I can do is type in what I want it to do, it will remember. So each time I push that button for that stitch, that straight stitch, it'll do exactly what I've set it to do. And each time I push in the buttonhole stitch, it will remember what my settings are so I don't have to fiddle around with settings all the time. So um, this works really well if you have a machine that remembers your stitches. Um, if not, I mean, you can still do it. It's just going to take a little more finagling and remembering that you have to ch change things. One of the things I forgot to mention on my settings is I have my needle. I'll show you how I watch my needle there move. Let's see if you can see it move. Maybe if I move it down a little bit. So, see if you can see it uh, move. I, I can move it side to side. So, so it, uh, well, I guess it's not going to move until I actually start sewing. So, I actually have moved it two places over to the right. Uh, and that's important for working with the buttonhole stitch that I'm going to be working with. But I'll show you how this neat little trick works. So, I start out with it upside down. I'm going to put my needle right beside that applique piece, not on top of it, but just right beside it. Let's see if I can move the camera in a little closer to, to show you. Let's do our little focus here. And see how it's just right beside that applique piece, not on top of it. So that's what we're going to go with. Let's see if it works from there. Let's see if I can still see what I'm doing. <laughs> nope. 
there now I can kind of see over the camera okay so I'm gonna start out with my straight stitch and I'm gonna stitch right up along that, that leg speaking because I haven't put the first foot down oh, and I haven't put the first foot down because I got distracted I like to pull up the bobbin thread and uh, here we are I'll just tuck those threads out of the way and then I'm gonna put the needle right back down in that spot where I started okay now I can put the press foot down and we're ready to sew so I'm going to I'm still trying to find my way around the camera here I'm going to stitch right up to where these fabrics meet and then my needles in a down position I lift up the pressure foot and I pivot around to where I'm going this way now and I did bump the camera, but it looks like it's still <laughs> at a decent angle for you, so that works. Okay, so I am now going to trim these little threads out of the way. There we go. And switch to my buttonhole stitch. Now I um, want to show you as I go some of my tricks for dealing with, with uh, when I have to go across areas and things like that. So here we go. I'm going to stitch down with my buttonhole stitch now and it will go right back over those stitches I just made and they're the same stitch length so it'll have to lock those in place. And we just keep going here. And you notice I'm continuing to keep the needle on the edge of the applique piece when it's doing the straight stitch and then when it does the bite part of the stitch that's when it catches the actual applique so and i'm going to have to start making some little adjustments so i lift up my presser foot a bit to keep things lined up with that needle going right there beside the applique And you'll find you just have to make little adjustments again that's why that needle down is such a neat feature because as I pivot the fabric around everything stays lined up I don't have to worry about it and I have a rather sharp corner here so I'm just going to flip around that looks about right and actually before I take my bite I'm gonna leave it a little bit Some of these little fine movements just take take practice of seeing where you're at so i do recommend what what you can do is like cut out a square cut out a circle and practice a little bit with the to get a feel for where your needle it doesn't take long to figure out where your needle's laying so that you can just kind of see as you go and i'm coming up to the point where i want to stop i'm going to take my bite and stop there now I handle this one of two ways I either am going to pivot it all the way around do with a straight stitch and lock off the stitches and then resume or I have this little cheat method I came up with where I'm just going to put back on the straight stitch and again because my stitches are the same I'm just going to stitch right along this applique until I come down to this point now I can pivot and go around and finish this leg and then when I do the the leg, other leg it's gonna top stitch right over the top of that with the buttonhole stitch so it will work out just fine so that's my little little cheat method I came up with I call it but okay so back to my buttonhole stitch I wish you could see my camera set up. It's a little document reader and I've got it setting so that it's between me and my sewing machine. My chin is kind of resting on the arm of it. <laughs> so I'm seeing through all these lines of arms for the camera and things kind of different. I've got a little pivoting to do here.
I don't want to stop, so I'm slowing down. I'll go ahead and take that stitch, and then I'm going to flip it around, go back to that straight stitch, and then I'm just going to take a few stitches. I didn't adjust it quite right where I had my needle. And then I, I'll also do a locking stitch to finish it off. Okay, so I'm trimming off the, the threads here. And so then I will just proceed with, let's see if I can wiggle this back under here. Then I will just proceed with stitching around the rest of the flamingo in the same same manner. I actually have um, um, several different threads I'm using because I'm going to match colors as I as I change get down here. You can see I'm, as I change colors, I'll match the colors and do that too. So, but I'm going to try to use all do all of the pink first and um, everything that's the same. I'm doing the legs with a slightly different colors than the rest of the pink, so it's more of a coral color. Um, so. That is how I handle the machine applique on these. So I hope that was a good little tip for you to help you out in doing that. If you have, like I said, if you have a machine that can remember stitches, it is a great time saver. Um, for my threads, by the way, I let me grab a hold of one I have out here. I like the sheen on the Magnifico thread. That's by Superior Threads. It has a, it's a nice, you can kind of see the shimmer on it. I use that on the top. And then I use a matching, this is masterpiece thread, <laughs> like my little bobbin holder. It's just a, <laughs> just a Q-tip that holds my bobbins in place. Um, so this is the masterpiece thread, also by Superior Th Threads. But you can see its sheen, it has a much lower sheen. And so that's the one I use in the bobbin. Um, it's one of the recommendations from the company was to use those two weights of thread together, this one in the bobbin and this one on the top. And I have found that they work really well. I like the finished product. So um, there you have my my unsolicited whatever about thread. So anyway, um, the next thing after I get all the stitching done is it'll be time to, I'm gonna, actually this one I'm going to make into a, either a table runner or a, just a wall hanging for a friend who loves flamingos and uh, so I'm probably going to put a border around it of some sort and then quilt it and add some embellishments to that and I will show you how in particular I learned to do the beads um, this is the first project that I've actually worked with with beads and I had a lot of fun putting them on there and it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be so I'll show you my tips for getting that done too in a future video so anyway, I hope you have happy quilting. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on my blog or on my Facebook page. I always um, answer. I read them, answer, love to talk with you. So um, feel free to contact me in that way, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so until next time, happy quilting. <laughs>